one of the most holiest places on earth would be the temple of God called the house of God. But things got so rough and so bad until Jesus himself had to cleanse the temple. In this lesson entitled, Jesus Cleanses the Temple, we're going to find out why. What did he do and for what? There are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'll leave a comment, a link in the comment section below as well. Click the link, get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bibles. Well, the Kojic Legacy Edition of the Sunday School is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join L. Riley Jones with our Sunday School lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes. Get your lessons and get ready. Now let's go. Sunday school is now in session. <laughs> Sunday school is now in session. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday school lesson that's taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ, and we're located at 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. The zip code is 60620. If this is your first time, leave, please leave me a comment. In the comment section below that this is your first time, I'd like to welcome you. All of you may leave me an email to RodneyJonesSundaySchool at gmail.com. Make sure you like this channel. Thumbs up, like, hit the subscribe button. It's a free subscription. Make sure you click that bell and finally click all so YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. Jesus had to go into the temple to purify it. He had to go into there to cleanse the temple because there were some things that was going on in the temple that was unrighteous, unholy, ungodly, against the command, against the temple itself. They had desecrated and was misappropriating and misusing the purpose of the temple. And so Jesus had to go in there and cleanse the temple. It's not an accident that he would do this at the same time that their houses should be cleansed of leaven. Oh, come on, Jesus. Let's look at what we're dealing with. So we are in, where are we? We are in uh, Isaiah, the 56th chapter, Church of God in the Christ, with all these long passages of Scripture, verses number 6 through 7. Then we shift to Jeremiah 7 verses 9 through 11, and then lastly, we go to Mark 15, verses 19 through 11. And Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your glory. We pray that your word causes edification to your body. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty, let's get to reading, and let's see what we're going to get up with. Now, if you need to uh, scan this with your phone, take your phone out. To your left, lower part of your screen, it says scan me for notes. If you want your notes for this, you can just take your phones out, turn your phone on camera, not video, but on camera, and then aim it at there. You'll see something show up. Click that link, and it'll take you to the notes. Type in the subject matter. All right. Let's look at what we got here. He says, also, the sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath polluting it or everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. It's interesting how God keep using personal pronouns and language. I love it. 
how he says, even them will I bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. And their burnt offerings and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon mine altar for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That's interesting to me how man has taken God's house and made it his house. I'm going to not go. I'm going to not going to get too far into that. I'm going to go into the lesson. So point number one, let's look at something. He says, also the sons, the sons of the stranger. Let me tell you, give you a little history of what's going on. So the Lord spoke about two specific or particular groups in this lesson. He spoke about the sons of the strangers and he spoke about the eunuchs. First, he said that the people were to keep judgment and they were to do righteous in verses number one. He said, because of his salvation is near and his righteousness is about to be revealed. He said, bless are those who were carefully do this. Do what? Keep judgment and keep righteous. Bless are those who would even honor the Sabbath, the Sabbath day of rest. And bless are all of those who would keep themselves from doing wrong. Number two, he mentions the strangers. He said that the strangers that join themselves to the Lord would not be able to say that the Lord will not allow us to be a part of his people. In verses number three, there would be a time where the strangers would not be able to say that the Lord will not allow us to be a part of his people. That's verses number three. Point number three, he speaks about the eunuchs and said that they would not be able to say that we are dried up because we have no children in the future. He says about the eunuchs, he says he would give them a memorial and a name with walls in his own house. And he would give him a name that would be far greater than the names that his daughters and sons could give them. And so the Lord said that he would bless these sons of the strangers who would commit to him. And these sons of the strangers must make sure that they don't desecrate the Sabbath day of rest. They were to serve the Lord and they were to love his name. They must take hold of the covenant that God has already made. And the Lord said when they do that, that he would bring them to his holy mountain, which we know as Jerusalem. Let me show you how. Let me go back to this. He says also the sons, which means the sons or the, the grandsons, the children, or even a member of a group. The sons of the strangers. The word strangers mean foreigners. You are not part of the original uh, children of Israel. You're coming in as an alien and or as a foreigner. He says if you join yourself, which means uh, it comes from a root, which means to twine, to unite, or even to commit. If you commit yourself to the Lord, now this is the self-existent one. So they are not part of the original, but if they were to keep up what God already instructed them to keep up, he says, I'm going to let you in. And the purpose of them coming in, according to scripture, is so that they can serve. The word serve means to minister. It also means to attend to as as the priest attended unto the Lord in the house of worship. That's another word for, for um, serve, which is another word for worship. I know a lot of times we look at Romans 12, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The word reasonable service, the word service means worship. That's how we worship God. Worship is just not on Sundays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or whatever. But when we leave and live a life where we have present our life to him, that's worship also. So in other words, the Lord will not reject the sons of the strangers who wants to commit themselves unto them. And so their purpose for joining themselves to him is so that they can serve the Lord. Now, I know we own this for a while. That's because 
We'll be giving all of these verses, and y'all know me. I like to go verse by verse, keywords, and key phrases. And I'm kind of slightly a little saddened that we have so many passages of the scripture for this particular topic, just to mention, <laughs> just to stop it. But keep on going. He says, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. The word keep means to guard. It means to observe. The word keep means to give heed. He says that you must continue to give heed to my commandment and honor my Sabbath by not polluting it. To pollute something means to profane it, to defile it, or even to desecrate it. He says, do not desecrate my Sabbath. He says, what I'm going to do is, even them will I bring to my holy mountain. God says, I'm going to bring, which means to bring in, to cause to come in. I'm going to gather you. Or I'm going to bring you near to my holy mountain. That word holy, we always understand. It means to be sanctified. It means to be sacred. It means saint. It means set apart from the common usage, but he says mountain, which can also mean a mount or a hill country. That hill country, ladies and gentlemen, would be Jerusalem. And then he says, and make them joyful in my house. Is that part of it? Yes. He says, I'm going to bring them into my holy mountain. I'm going to make them joyful. I'm going to make them joyful, which means I'm going to cause them to rejoice. I'm going to cause them to be glad because they were not a part of my original, but now they are a part of my people, a part of my family. They have been grafted in. And so I'm going to make them to be or cause them to be glad in my house of prayer. Keep that in focus, not a house of whatever else. Jones, keep moving. Then he says, and their offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted in mine altar. The word accepted means to have pleasure in and to have delight in. God says, I will have delight in their offerings. Now, that's huge, unusual because he used the term burnt offerings. Now, they would not be given burnt offerings, especially in the new kingdom. Simply because there will be a time where the burnt offerings will be no more. And the burnt offerings were not for everyone. It was for the children of Israel. However, when you look at the word burnt offering, which means to be offered up whole, it really implies it has a spiritual connotation to it, which means that they will offer up themselves wholly unto the Lord. So he says, I will accept their offerings, their sacrifices. It will be accepted upon my altar. And I believe I could be right <laughs> that there is a spiritual altar. And that spiritual altar, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Do you think that the spiritual altar is called the C-R-O-S-S, -S, the Christ? Come on, somebody, because Paul said to present your bodies a living sacrifice. That means your whole entire body. That means to give God everything. That means offer up your entire. That's the whole thing. And that's the purpose of the burnt offering. It was to be burnt whole, offered up to the Lord whole as one. That means completely and totally committed. So the altar may be a spiritual thing talking about the cross. Check out when you get a chance, Hebrew 13 and 10. And he says that we're to offer unto the Lord the sacrifices of praise. Anyhow, Hebrews 13 and 15, because when we offer up the lips of praise, Jesus as the high priest takes our praises up unto the Lord. He says, my house is going to be called a house of prayer for all nations, which is why Jesus was mad. And it's interesting because there were certain restrictions on people that could not enter into the temple. Check out Deuteronomy 23 and 2. For the sake of censor and Facebook and all that, I've got to be very careful what I say. One time they flagged me when I read 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 6, 9 through 11, but you don't flag the gang members and all of them. That is interesting to me. So let's jump to Jeremiah 7. Verses 9 through 11. 
And let's see what we can get. He says, will you steal? Will you steal and murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and not to God? And then you walk after other gods whom ye know not. Now watch what God says. You do all of that and then you come and stand before me. Where? In this house, which is called by my name, and say, some of your scriptures will say chant, as if they were singing a chant or something. And they will say, we are snatched, the word deliver means to snatch, to do all these abominations. What on earth is he saying? So Jeremiah was told by God to stand at the gates of the Lord's house to make an open proclamation. He was to speak to the house of Judah in the gate to those who had come to worship God or allegedly to worship God. The Lord said if they quit their evil ways, he will let them stay in that place. He said, don't listen to those who prophesy peace because what was going on is that people were prophesying peace. The temple of God, the temple of God, the temple of God. In other words, they were looking unto the temple of God for a safety net, which means regardless of how much evil we do, regardless of the fact that we were stealing, that we were murdering, that we were committing adultery, they were giving swearing false. The word false means a lie. Swearing falsely, which means making false oaths. What were these oaths? They were saying to the people, you can do what you want to do and don't have to worry about it because you can come here in the temple because God won't let nothing happen to the temple, nor you while you're in the temple, is what they were saying. Uh, 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 he said that they, they, they had shed innocent blood in that place and they had to stop murdering and stop worshiping idol gods. Then the Lord said that he would allow them to stay in the land if they were to do that. Hmm. And God said, don't think you won't suffer just because the temple is here. Because Solomon said, Lord, if they get in trouble by you or by others, if they get scattered or anything, he says, if they would turn toward the temple and call upon your name, would you hear from heaven? And God said, if they turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. That's why we don't really understand 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Those petitions were requests that Solomon made, and God had to step to Solomon and tell them the realness of what would take place. So the Lord said, do you think you can steal and murder and commit uh, adultery and a lie? Do you think you can continue to burn incense unto the idol God called Baal? He said, they really don't know Baal. Yet they burn incense unto him. He says, after all of this, he said, they will still come into the temple and feel as if they will be saved. Remember, God judged Israel as one nation. He doesn't judge the church as one nation. He judged Israel as one nation. So the temple is where the Lord put his name there in. Deuteronomy 12 and 11. Look at what he said. He said, would you still commit a murder and commit adultery? Now, there is a twofold meaning of adultery. There's a physical aspect, which means the husbands were stepping out on the wives or the wives were stepping out on the husbands, which means they were unfaithful. Then there is a spiritual aspect, which means they were stepping out on God. At the time they went after other gods, that was a spiritual adultery. And I know some people don't support that. That's fine. Continue to do what you do. Come on, somebody. He said that they were thieves and murderers, and God was not pleased with it at all. You look at Judges 2 and 17, God said they went a whoring after other gods. And I hope that I don't get flagged by that. If I do, y'all start fighting for me. <laughs> they swore falsely. The word swore means to make an oath. They, fought, they swore they made an oath falsely, which means they lied. And then they burned incense which means to cause incense to smoke, to offer up, which was another form of worshiping. So the false oaths were statements made about the security of the temple, Jeremiah 7 and 4. 
They lied to the people about having security in the temple. They lied and said that they can do anything and come to the temple and live. They cry, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Hear ye, hear ye. That's Jeremiah 7 and 4. Those were false claims. Those were false oath. They swore falsely. And Judah had set up altars to burn unto Baal. That's Jeremiah 11 and 13. And God pronounced evil upon them because they offered these idols or, or unto these idols. Jeremiah 11 and 13. He said that they walked after other gods who you knew not. To walk after someone or something is to follow after them, is to go after them. To know them means relationally speaking or to know them through and or by experience. But he said you were doing this to gods that you didn't know. And God said that these were gods that their fathers didn't even bring. That's Deuteronomy 37 and 17. Plus, most of this are covenants, part of the Ten Commandments that God said that they were not supposed to break. He said, you shall have no other God before me. That's Exodus 20 and 3. And they were following after God that they didn't know, God that they could not have an experience. And it's interesting, the true and living God is the one who pulled them out of, and yet they're following God that they made them Self. Then it says, and then you will come and stand before me in my house, which is called by na my name. Interesting, they couldn't stand before the new gods. The new gods couldn't do nothing. The new gods couldn't talk. The new gods couldn't make covenants. The new gods never uh, brought them out of bondage, just like in our day and time. So they already lied and said of their safety in the temple, but God is getting ready to tell them something different. Then they said that we are delivered to all of these abominations or to do all of these. The word delivered here means to snatch away, to rescue, and it also means to save. And an abomination is a disgusting thing. So the prophet already warned them to stop sinning. He told them that God was not pleased with what they were doing. And they spoke to each other and said that they didn't have to worry. And they figured they can do all this and go into the house of God and God not be moved nor bothered by it. They continued to steal, they lied, they cheated, and they came to God like they were innocent and they went into the temple of God as if he would cover them and so on and so forth. But let's see what took place by this. He says, in this house, this house, which is called by my name, which is the house of God, became a den of robbers in your eyes? Or is, that's the question. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I, even I, that's God talking, even I have seen it, self, the self-existent one. I love that. The self-existent God is this house, this house. Rather than coming to the house of God to worship, they came into God's house to hide. <laughs> they thought because the temple was for worship that God didn't see them. And God said, you have made my house, which is called by my name, a den of robbers. What does that look like? You all are robbers and you're coming into the house of God to as an asylum. Or is it asylum? As an asylum. Or, or is it an asylum? <laughs> Which one is it? Y'all write it down there and tell me. You come in here. All of y'all are thieves. You're robbers and you're cheaters. And you're coming in my house not to worship me, but to hide under a pretense is what God says that you're doing. Oh, my. Now, let's get over to here to what his son said in the book of Mark. Fly, and they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in, bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. 
and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Let's look at what's going on. So Jesus, right here, and they come to Jerusalem. Now, we are still in Jerusalem. Those other places, we are now in Jerusalem. We're now in the actual temple again. Jesus goes into the temple, which, ladies and gentlemen, is his house. It is also his father's house. And look what he began to do. The Bible said he began to cast out them. Which ones? The ones that sold and bought in where? The temple. And not only did he begin to cast out, but he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Doves was a poor man's sacrifice. Uh, if you could not afford uh, a sacrifice, you were to catch a dove, which also means a turtle, a turtle dove and or a pigeon. Ladies and gentlemen, it was one of these that Mary, the mother of Jesus, offered as a sacrifice, which means apparently they were not rich. Anyhow, and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel that were vessels sometimes as a household uh, item or something like that into the temple. So the key thing here, ladies and gentlemen, is the temple right here. There's the problem in the temple, and I'm sure, yes, in the temple. So the problem and the sin is taking place in the temple. It's taking place in the house of God. So Jesus goes into the temple as he sees something he didn't like. Now, this is not the first time he was in the temple. The first time he was in the temple, according to scripture, is when he rode in to the city of Jerusalem, when he rode into Jerusalem on the coat or the ass of a coat. He rode in there while they were throwing their garments in the ground or in the streets and they were crying Hosanna to the, the Lord, uh, uh, the highest or the word Hosanna means save me. Watch this. Scripture says when he went in that day, he looked in in the temple and then he turned around and left the next day he comes back into the temple but before he gets there he sees a tree and he was hungry so he cursed the tree because the tree was perpetrating the fig tree is a representation of the children of Israel they were pretending like they were producing fruit, but they were not. That temple and the tree are related to one another because he cursed the tree and he beat them out of the temple because they were perpetrating as well. They were supposed to have been worshiping God, but they were not. And the chief priests and them were allowing it to happen. So he finds in the temple those that sacrifice uh, the, the soul sacrifice, I should say, to those who were pilgrims. Because this is also the same time of the Passover feast. And they will migrate from all over to come into the temple. And many will go into the temple to exchange some coins. I'll tell you why. So it was illegal, some of the things that they were doing to a certain extent. So the Jews at this point were under the Roman Empire and Jewish law required every man pay a tribute to the sanctuary of one half shekel, Exodus 30 and 11. And the temple was used to exchange the Jewish coin to the Roman coin. And the money changers were charging for this exchange to happen. And thousands would have need of this particular because they could travel at a time without the sacrifice and go into the temple to make purchase. The Bible says soul, which means to borrow. But they made this more important 
than worship and prayer in the temple. So the problem was that this existed was uh, uh, they were making merchandise of it. And the Bible said that he began to cast out those that sold or bartered in the temple. He overthrew the tables of the money changers and he overthrew the seats of them that sold the doves. And these would be different sections of uh, the temple. It didn't all take place in one section of the temple. They come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. Remember during the temple, during this time, it was the Passover, John 2 and 13. And this is the second time that Jesus went into the temple. That's Mark 11, 11, when he went in there the first time. He says, he began to cast out, which means to eject by force, to expel those that sold. The word sold means to barter, to barter. Now, John 2 and 13 says that he saw them selling oxen, sheep, and doves. And he also saw the changers of the money sitting at the table exchanging the money, and he began to eject them out. Continue to think and understand that there was an exchange system that was legally taking place in the temple. However, they were making merchandise of it, and they were charging and overcharging the people. He overthrew, which means to overturn. He overthrew, which means to throw down. He overthrew, which means to upset the money changers, which means the bankers. How are you a banker in the house of God? Come on, some sorry. You are you. <laughs> you. <coughs> Chase, Church of God in Christ right inside of New Nation Church of God in Christ. I'm going to keep that going. And the Bible said that he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Suffer means to allow or to permit any man to carry, to convey through, to carry, or even to transport any vessel. A vessel is an instrument. It is also called, some of your translations will say, household equipment or any product. Because what they were doing, they were going through certain sections of the temple that was used for certain things. And rather than going around, they were using it as a shortcut. And I don't care how much of a shortcut you need, certain things you should never really bring through the main sanctuary. Don't bring the garbage and garbage and the trash to the main sanctuary. Go around and go out the other door and come around. Come on, somebody. And so there was a blatant disrespect for the temple because they were more concerned about making money. And look at what he did. And he taught them saying, verses number 16, 17. He taught them saying, uh, is it not written, my house should be called of all nations, the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. So as we understand, Jesus goes back to Jeremiah and he goes back to Isaiah and he brings up the passages of scripture that we were reading. So he took time to teach them the, uh, the scriptures and the word teach means also to instruct. He went back to Isaiah and Jeremiah. The temple that were, they were abusing was the house of God. God designated this place as his house for the purpose of worship. And God told them when they came to Jerusalem that were, they were to build this place and he would put his name there in the book of Deuteronomy, this 12th chapter. But Jesus was not pleased with what he saw because they were not worshiping God. They had turned God's house into a den of thieves, a den of of uh, 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 robbers in the Old Testament and thieves in the New Testament. It was also during this time that they were not to have any leavened bread in their house, remember, because this is the time of the feast. So they were to make sure no leavened bread was in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, leaven is another term for sin. And ladies and gentlemen, they were committing sin in the house, which was the house of God, which means there was leaven in God's house. So Jesus had to put all the leaven out. 
Ah, come on, somebody. Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. And we need somebody who's going to be bold enough in this day and time to tell the people of God that this is not right. What is going on in God's house? Everything should not be allowed to go on in the name of worship. I know it feels good to the soul and to the flesh, to the mind and to the body. But the question is, is this something that God accepts? Forget what you accept. Forget what you like. I don't care how much money it costs for them to go to school for it. Did God say that what's going on is bringing glory and honor to him? If it doesn't bring it to God, then we should not be doing it in the tabernacle. Now watch this. The scribes, these professionals of the Mosaic law and the leading priests, they heard it. What did they hear? They heard the teachings of God, of Jesus. And they sought how they might destroy him. For they feared the people because all they, they feared him, I should say, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. Another word for doctrine, ladies and gentlemen, is teaching. Now, other passages of scripture said that there were other people that came in to the temple and Jesus healed them. And when even was come, he went out of the city. As we go back to our houses of worship, as we're viewing this lesson, as we're studying and restudying the word of God, I need to encourage the people of God that we should never lose focus on the fact that this is God's house. And whatever we do in God's house ought to be done through the will of God, through obedience to God. And we need to have biblical references to uh, to show the people that what we're doing is actually biblical. Stop allowing any and everything to take place in God's house, especially in the name of worship. I encourage y'all to continue to seek the Lord and continue to do what the Lord wants us to do. I'm on my way to uh, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, I will be doing a Sunday school conference. If you want me to do a Sunday school conference, you need to shoot me an email, Rodney Jones, uh, Sunday school at gmail.com. I will be at the Meadowbrook Baptist Church. There's a $35 per uh, uh, participant fee, whatever you might want to call it. There it is right there. Snap a picture of it and you'll see what you need to do. Also, Sunday, Sunday, by the time you read this Sunday will be the day, March 10th. I will be doing a teaching. I thank God for uh, president of Sunday School, Dr. Mark Ellis. Uh, Evangelist Gladden was last week, and Elder Rett was the week before that. President Mark Ellis is the one who started us off February the 18th, and I will be closing us out with the power of music in ministry. Make sure you register. Hurl up and register. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, and my anniversary is coming up April the 14th. That's it. If you want to support this channel, matter of fact, if you need to do your notes, take your phone and put it up right there. And that way, yep, just take your phone, put it on camera and point it right there to that thing right there. And something will pop up. Touch that that pops up. It'll take you right to the notes and then type in. Those of you that want to support this channel, there's your way to support this channel. I want to appreciate you all uh, for your support, your moral support, your spiritual support. Some of you all have been praying for me. I'm, I'm almost out of the woods. I'm still a little bit sick. And where I had the surge in my forehead, I still have a little pain every now and then. But I praise God. Pain says that I can still feel. I thank God for all of your support and everything you do. Remember my model, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. And if the Lord delay is coming, if the creek don't rise, and if it be the Lord's will, and providing that I don't oversleep, I'll see you all Sunday at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time for our live session of the Sunday School. Remember the model of the Church of God in Christ, Sunday School. A child saved is a soul saved plus a life. Amen. Please subscribe to my granddad's channel.